What's going on guys, this is the Wobble Fit, and this video is to help you visualize what I'm describing in my article. Now, if you're not already watching this video on NuggetBridge, I suggest following along in the article so you can see what I'm talking about. The link will be in the description for those that need it. Without further ado, let's see what this blue-green screen with all the numbers on it can really be used for. The first step to using a damage calculator is knowing where it is. Now, I personally like to use the one created by Honko, a member of Smogin. You can access it by typing in pokemonshowdown.com slash damagecalc, or you can find the link in the article. Alternatively, you can head on over to Pokemon Showdown, enter any chat room that you like, and type forward slash calc. A link will pop up for you to use. So here we'll go to Showdown. I have my bookmark link straight to Showdown's VGC room, but any chat room will work. In here we'll type slash calc. Voila! Just click on the link and it'll take you straight to the damage calculator. Now, there's another modified version of Honko's damage calculator you can use, created by another smoking user, Gamut. He tends to stay on top of user requests and keeps things up to date. As of this video, his damage calculator has the new Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire Mega Evolutions in it, and Honko's doesn't. By going to gamut was taken GitHub.io, you can find his damage calculator. And again, I'll leave a link to it in the article. As you can see, it looks pretty similar, uh, but I personally don't like it because it seems almost cluttered to me. I feel like I'm never gonna need the terrain moves, and I definitely don't use the special weather conditions of Primal Groudon, Kyogre, and Mega Rayquaza. I also prefer Honko's calculator because it is officially supported by Showdown. However, if you want a damage calculator that has the accessibility of the new Mega Evolutions, by all means, use it! This guide should be similar enough that you should be able to follow along without any problems. Finding a Pokémon in the damage calculator is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is select either of the drop-down options by Bombus Snow's name, then drag the scroll bar down to the Pokémon you want to use. In this case, I'll choose Amoongus. Alternatively, you can begin to type in the Pokémon's name, and it will appear. Here's Mega Mawile, Suicune, Conkelder, Rotom Wash. You get the idea. Now, you may have noticed I'm clicking the blank set option with all of these. The other options are usually for Smogan's fan-made formats, like OU, Ubers and underused. However, VGC15 is a totally different format to play than these level 100 single battle formats. The OU, Uber, and other EV spreads for Smogan's formats in the damage calculator are tailored towards those specific formats. Look at this Mega Mawile EV spread, for instance. I probably could tell you that the 252 attack EVs, with the adamant nature, maximizes Mega Mawile's offense, but I have no idea what the speeder HP EVs do. Because of this, I tend to use the blank set option, even though some Pokémon might have sets for VGC14. In this case, this EV spread is probably okay to use, because we often calculate against extremes, and Mega Mawile's Play Rough is an extremely powerful attack. However, there are some EV spreads like this little Colos that has EVs all over the place. If you don't know your stats off the top of your head, you wouldn't know that this little Colo always outspeeds a Rotom with no speed investment or that survives Mega Mawile's play rev 100% of the time. And then, how do you even know it's a viable EV spread to use? I've seen much better EV spreads by other players that have placed really well in tournaments. So, if I'm going to calculate against Lucolo, I'm going to use the blank set option. Since we're playing in VGC, we need to set our level to 50. Although we don't have to right away, clicking a doubles tab is a good habit to get into as well. Performing a damage calculation might sound difficult at first, but trust me, it's not hard at all. For example, let's say I want to see how much damage a Cresselia's Ice Beam does to a Landorus Darien form. So over here, we'll type in Cresselia. Choose the blank set. Level 50. Down here by the moves, we'll type in Ice Beam. Go over here, type in Landorus Darien. Blank set. Level 50. And we'll give up our HP. Alright, that's pretty impressive. It won't knock out Landorus, but it'll do a considerable amount of damage. Now, you might wonder what these numbers are here. 
Those numbers are called damage rolls, and there are 16 of them. Because Pokemon is the game that it is, a Pokemon's attack's damage will vary depending on which damage roll the game selects. This process is entirely random. We don't have any control over this as players. With these 16 damage rolls, you deal anywhere from 132 to 156 damage. So, what the damage calculator does is give you a range of damage in this group of text up here. It also displays this damage as a percentage. So 132 divided by 165 gives us 80%, and 156 divided by 165 gives us 94.5%. The damage calculator rounds down to the nearest tenth place, so the actual percentages might not be spot on accurate, but still close enough for what we need the damage calculator to do for us. You can calculate damage from either side of the damage calculator. For example, if I want to see how much damage Landorus's U-turn does, I don't have to switch Pokemon around to figure it out. Just click the move you want to view at the top of the screen. I'll give Landorus some extra attacking power with 252 EVs in the Adamant Nature. I know the Cresselia doesn't have any HP or defense EVs, but that's okay for right now. If we choose both Ice Beam and Shy Shock on Cresselia, you'll notice that it has both moves at the top of the screen, but it displays Ice Beam in that group of text. This is also true if Ice Beam is the second move and Psy Shock is the first. So if I switch these two around, it still displays Ice Beam. The damage calculator is programmed to show the move that deals the most damage, so it thinks Ice Beam is the most important right now. If I take away Ice Beam, it'll show U-Turn as the most powerful attack. Now, you don't have to just use the damage calculator for serious stuff. Have some fun with it. Just for a heck of it, we can see how much damage Victini's V-Create KOs a level 1 Paris or something like that. Um, as you can see, it's going to do quite a bit of damage. I mean, it's just going to be outrageous. I don't quite remember the maximum amount of damage the game is capable of dealing, but if I remember right, it has something to do with a power trick, huge power shuckle using V-Create through Mimic against a level 1 Ghastly that used Reflect type and had Forest Curse use on it. There's a whole bunch of other stuff too, and the grand total was calculated to be over 12 billion damage. Now that we know how to perform a damage calculation, let me show you the wide variety of damage any one attack can do. For example, let's look at Mega Mawile's Play Rough. Level 50. Play Rough. Against a Zapdos. Level 50. With no attack invested in Mega Mawile, and no HP or defense invested in Zapdos, Play Rough does about 73-87% to 87 damage. However, Mega Mawile usually have some attack, right? Let's give it max attack by giving it 252 EVs and an adamant nature. As you can see, the damage done to Zapdos is now over 100%, meaning a Mega Mawile with max attack will always KO a Zapdos with no HP or defense EVs. Giving Zapdos 252 HP EVs isn't really crazy bad either, and when we do that, you'll notice that Mega Mawile's Play Rough always does less than 100% damage. This means that a max attack Play Rough will never one-hit KO a Zapdos with 252 HP. What happens if we put 252 EVs in defense instead of HP? We actually survive the attack a bit nicer, about 8% less damage than before. We can add the bold nature to further increase our defense if we want to. And if we put 252 EVs in both HP and Defense with the Bold Nature, Flaring Rough will only do at maximum 70% damage to Zapdos. We can even lower Mega Mawile's attack EVs for the sake of the example. Ray's old Regional's EV Sprite just had 52 attack EVs in a careful nature, and that would only do about 50% damage on average. The point here is that Mega Mawile's Play Rough can do anywhere from about 50% to outright KOing the Zapdos, with each player's EV spreads being a huge factor in how much damage Play Rough will do. Well, fantastic, but what kind of damage does Zapdos do back to Mega Mawile? In this situation, we'll probably be damaging Mega Mawile first. So let's check out Thunderbolt's damage. I'll switch Mega Mawile's nature from Careful back to the default Hardy, which is a nature that doesn't raise or lower any stats on a Pokemon. I'll give Mega Mawile 252 HP, and I'll take off Play Ref just so Thunderbolt shows up as our main attack. If you'll notice, Thunderbolt does a little less than 50% to Mega Mawile right now, which means it would take 3 Thunderbolts to knock out Mega Mawile. If I give Zapdos 252 Special Attack EVs though, you'll notice that it does over 50% to Mega Mawile. Not always, but it's very close. 
if we tack on a modest nature, now Thunderbolt always does more than 50% damage to Mega Mawile, so it's guaranteed to knock out Mega Mawile in two hits. You might wonder why I'm using Thunderbolt to calculate damage against Mega Mawile. Why not use Heat Wave? Sure, I can use Heat Wave too, but I need to make sure I click the doubles tab in the middle of the screen. If an attack hits more than one Pokémon on the field, the game weakens that attack by a bit to account for the advantage of hitting two Pokémon at once. When testing the damage of these spread moves in the damage calculator, you gotta make sure the doubles tab is clicked instead of singles. The difference between the two is actually pretty significant, about 20-ish percent. There are times when you'd want to calculate a single target heat wave, but you would only do this if Mega Mawile was by itself. That means there's not partner Pokémon on the opponent's side of the field that's protecting, dodge the heat wave, is named Heatran and absorb the attack with Flash Flyer, or anything like that. Mega Mawile has to be by itself. As a general rule, if the spread move hits every other Pokémon on the field, like Earthquake, Surf, or Discharge, then only the attacker and one other Pokémon can be on the field for you to be able to click the Singles tab. Similarly, when using a move like Rock Slide, Heat Wave, or a Hyper Voice that just hits both of your opponent's Pokémon, only one Pokémon can be on your opponent's side of the field for you to be able to click the Singles tab. There are more specific examples in the article, so check those out if it's still a bit confusing to understand. With the spread move stuff out of the way, you might have noticed that Heat Wave only does slightly more damage than Thunderbolt, even though Heat Wave is a super effective attack. 3-4% is not really that big of a difference. You can find this similar concept present when using Hidden Power against a target that isn't 4 times weak to it. For example, if we look at both Hidden Power Ice and Thunderbolt against Thunderous, you'll notice that Thunderbolt does more damage. This quirk is the same even if I give Thunderous 252 HP EVs. So, why is this the case? Well, there are mathematical reasons behind this, but this is part of the reason why the damage calculator is so useful. You don't always have to understand the math behind the damage of moves, and anyone can just observe the differences in attacks by comparing the two moves together. Just for completeness' sake, here's why this happens in terms of math. By the way, any calculator works for this, like the one on your phone, or just a basic pocket calculator. Anyway, Thunderbolt's base power is 90, and we multiply this number by 1.5 for the same type attack bonus. Basically, when a Pokémon uses a move that is the same as that Pokémon's type, the power of the move increases by 1.5 times. So, 90 times 1.5 is 135. Now, Hidden Power Ice has a base power of 60, and as I'm sure you know, Moves that are super effective are twice as powerful, so here, we multiply 60 times 2, which is 120. Because 135 is bigger than 120, Zapdos does more damage with Thunderbolt than Hidden Power Ice in this situation. The difference between Heat Wave and Thunderbolt requires a very similar calculation to determine which one is stronger. When spread moves get their power decreased, they are decreased by 0.75 times. Since Heat Wave has 95 base power, we multiply 95 times 0.75, then multiply that by 2 because Heat Wave is a super effective attack. This gives us 142.5, and if you'll recall, that's only a bit more than 135, Thunderbolt's estimated base power. Now, technically this isn't exactly the way the game will calculate damage, but it's totally fine to use this as an estimate to see what's going on. This information might seem like trivia at first, but it actually has its uses in competitive play. For example, let's say you have your Zapdos and Conkeldur versus your opponent's Tyranitar and Meg Mawile that's at 40%. Everything else is at 100% HP. You're going to have to use Drain Punch with Conkeldur to knock out Tyranitar. It looks like an easy turn. All you have to do is knock out Meg Mawile, then Conkeldur can easily swat Tyranitar. However, if you use Heat Wave and miss Meg Mawile, its play rep will knock out Conkeldur, and then Tyranitar's Rock Slide will put Zapdos in an unwinnable position. This is where knowing your damage calculations come in handy. Rather than risk Heat Wave missing, you can use the 100% accurate Thunderbolt, ensuring your victory. The next two points I'm about to cover are relatively simple. Over here, I'll choose Tyranitar. Blank set. Level 50. We'll give it the move Rock Slide. Against the Moltres. Blank set. Level 50. And the doubles tab is set because Rock Slide is a spread move here. Now, you'll notice this Rock Slide always one-hit KOs Moltres. 
If I want to give Moltres the Charting Berry to help it survive Rock Slide, I can select it over here. If I want to give Tyranitar a Life Orb, you do the same thing. Add it from the drop-down menu next to the word Item. Choosing an item really isn't all that difficult. Choosing an ability is done in very much the same way. Over here, I'll choose Sylveon. Level 50. And over here, I'll choose Garchomp. Level 50. Now I'll give Sylveon Hyper Voice. 252 Special Attack EVs. The Modest Nature. And finally, I'll give it the item choice specs. Looking at the damage calculation, you can tell something's definitely messed up here. I'm pretty sure Hyper Voice should do a little more than 40% to a Garchomp. Clearly, we're lacking Pixelate on Sylveon, and after adding it, you can see Hyper Voice's correct damage. Pokemon that only have one ability, like Mega Evolutions, Landorusterion, or Rotom, automatically have their ability set for them. So basically, just remember to set your abilities if you need them. If you're using Honko's calculator, you might notice when going to choose a certain move or Pokemon that it's not there. At the time you're watching this video, the new Mega Evolutions might be implemented into the damage calculator already, but this information is still handy to know in case a new Pokemon form or move comes out and you want to do damage calculations with it immediately. Let's do a damage calculation between Mega Camerupt and Aegislash. Now, I happen to know off the top of my head that Mega Camerupt has 145 base special attack, but unless you have every new Mega Pokemon's base stats memorized, you'll still probably need a list of base stats from time to time. Now, there are two different ways to do this. The first way is to go to Bulbapedia, where they have a nice list of every fully evolved and mega evolved Pokemon's base stats. The link to this list will be in the article. The quickest way to find the Pokemon you want is to hit Ctrl F, or Command F if you're using a Mac, then type in the Pokemon's name, in our case Mega Camerupt. And right here you'll see it has a 145 base special attack stat. Now, you don't have to copy over all the base stats, just the ones we care about for the damage calculation. In this case, I'm just doing an offensive calculation, so I'll just need a special attack stat. In the base column, change the 105 in special attack to 145. Instead of using Ballopedia, alternatively, you can go to Pokemon Showdown, and just like we could find the damage calculator by using a forward slash command, we can type forward slash DT, then the name of the Pokemon we want to check out. In this case, it's Mega Camera. As you can see, that's a 145 base special attack stat. So, back to the damage calculator, we already have Camera special attack stat at 145, so we need to give it sheer force and some attacking moves. Here's Heat Wave. Earth Power. And we'll give it max special attack with 252 EVs and a modest nature. Over here, we'll give Aegislash 252 HP EVs. And there you have it! It looks like Earth Power gets a guaranteed Oko on Aegislash, but Heat Wave doesn't. With all the fundamentals out of the way, we can get into the primary purpose of the damage calculator, using it to help create specialized EV spreads. Let's say I have a Latias on some particular team, and I'm using it mainly as a bulky Tailwind setter that can take on all kinds of attacks. It has a basic moveset of Draco Meteor, Psy Shock, Tailwind, and Protect. Not a very complicated Latias. Let's say this Latias is up against Choice Spec Sylveon, and I want to be able to take one of its Cyper Voices so Latias can set up Tailwind and still get off an attack, or be able to damage Sylveon or its partners twice with Draco Meteor or Psy Shock before going down. If I want to survive this, I could just run 252, 252, and I'd be done. Look, I survived the Hyper Voice. Well, you can do this, but there's a problem doing it this way. You see, you only have 4 EVs left for special attack, or 4 EVs left for defense, or 4 EVs left for speed. We could clear out some of these 252 special defense EVs to free them up for other stats, but we still want to be able to survive that Hyper Voice from Sylveon. So, what we can do is take EVs from defense until Latias just barely survives Hyper Voice. After all, Hyper Voice will knock out Latias in two shots right now, no matter what we do. 
Even though the Latias will take a greater percentage of damage than before, those extra EVs can be used elsewhere in special attack, speed, or defense, so Latias can do more for a team that just have a lot of special defense. Because it's unlikely we know what amount of EVs it takes for Latias to barely survive Hyper Voice off the top of our heads, we can gradually take out EVs from special defense until Latias takes less than 100% damage. Just throw numbers around until you find the minimum amount. Here's 204, that's too much. 188 is too much. 156 is too much. 100 is too little, since I mean Latias has a chance of getting KO'd by Hyper Voice. 124 is too little. 132 isn't enough. Let's see if 140 works. Yes, it does work. So, as you can see, Hyper Voice will never KO Latios with just 252 HP EVs and 140 Special Defense EVs. This means we have 116 extra EVs to place anywhere else we want, and that's even before we chose a nature for Latias. Depending on the rest of your goals on Latias, those extra EVs might go into Special Attack to deal more damage overall, or maybe they'll go in Speed to let Latias step tail in quicker, or maybe there will be a mix of the two. Who knows? For this example, I'm just showing how to survive Sylveon's Hyper Voice using the minimum amount of EVs. Just like we can always survive an attack by making sure it does less than 100%, we can make sure an attack always does more than 100% to guarantee that attack picks up a knockout. When would you want to use this? Let's look at a Thunderous versus a Belly Drum Azumarill. For those of you unfamiliar with how Belly Drum Azumarill works, the plus 6 attack gained from using Belly Drum combos especially well with Azumarill's priority Aqua Jet and lets its play rough deal a crazy amount of damage. Belly Drum Azumarill comes with a Citrus Berry, and if Azumarill's HP stat is even, Citrus Berry will activate after using Belly Drum, leaving Azumarill at a reasonable 75% HP. If I want my Thunderous to always be able to KO Azumarill after it sets up Belly Drum, or deal enough damage to it so it won't be able to set up Belly Drum at all, Thunderbolt will have to deal about 75% damage. We'll get to the exact number in a bit. I could just give Thunderous 252 special attack EVs and call it a day. After all, I definitely do more than 75% damage right now. However, the Thunderous on this particular team is supposed to be bulky. It's supposed to be able to stick around for a long time to spread Thunder Wave for speed control and use moves like Taunt and Swagger to restrict my opponent's options. Giving Thunderous 252 special attack EVs really cuts into the bulk that I'm mainly using Thunderous for, and I still want to be able to secure this important KO for my team. So, to do this, we need to figure out what Azumarill's HP stat will be after the Belly Drum and Citrus Berry recovery. Like before, any basic calculator will work just fine for this. Citrus Berry only activates after Belly Drum is used if the HP stat of a Pokemon is even, so we'll use 206 HP for the purposes of this calculation. 206 HP divided by 2 is 103. Citrus Berry recovers one-fourth of a Pokemon's health, so here we'll take 206 divided by 4. That equals 51.5, and since you can't recover 0.5 of an HP stat, Azumarill will recover 51 HP. So, after using Belly Drum, Azumarill is at 103 HP, and we'll add the 51 Citrus Berry recovery to that, giving us a 154 HP stat. That means Thunderous's Thunderbolt would have to always deal 154 damage or more to accomplish this goal. As you can see right here, we're doing 180 to 212 damage, more than enough to KO Azumarill. Let's see if we can accomplish this goal with no special attack EVs. Nope, that won't work. The minimum amount of damage has to be at least 154. Let's start trying out some numbers. 4 EVs isn't enough. 100 EVs is too much. Let's try something in the middle. 60 EVs isn't enough. And 68 EVs does 156 damage. Now, we never actually did 154 damage exactly, but that's okay. Our goal was to just KO Azumarill with Thunderbolt using the minimum amount of EVs necessary, and we accomplished that using 68 EVs while we couldn't do it at 60. With this goal accomplished, we can still focus the majority of our EVs in bulk, but we've secured a very important KO with this dab of special attack. Just like we can EV a Pokemon to always KO a Pokemon or always survive a specific attack, we can also always outspeed a certain Pokémon. Pokémon have limits with just how high their stats can go. Let's look at Mega Kangaskhan, for example. If I give it 252 EVs in speed and the Jolly Nature, it reaches a 167 speed stat, 
which means a Pokémon with 168 speed will always outspeed every Mega Kangaskhan out there for sure. Because a Pokémon only needs one more speed point than the opponents to always outspeed it, it makes sense to conservatively invest in speed if you're only concerned about a few specific threats. Rather than calculate the speed stats of every Pokémon, however, there are awesome people like Level 51 who create speed tiers, which is a list of speed stats relevant Pokémon in the metagame reach with no speed investment, full speed investment, or after things like Swift Swim or Choice Scarf are concerned. Here are the speed tiers, which can be found on Nugget Bridge, and a link can be found to this page in the article. This is where Level 51 explains how his tables are set up, but here's a basic rundown. If you see a boost of plus one, that means that Pokémon is holding a Choice Scarf, or used a move such as Dragon Dance. If you see a boost of plus two, that means that Pokémon has Swift Swim, Sand Rush, or Chlorophyll, or is under the effects of Tailwind. If you see a boost of zero, that speed stat is the Pokémon's natural speed that I can reach. I'll scroll down for a bit here. By the way, these numbers on the left are the actual speed stats, arranged from greatest to least. The boost of minus two means that Pokémon is holding an Iron Ball, though I've really only seen that used successfully on Tyranitar before. Going back up, if we want to find what speeds that Mega Speed Mega Kangaskhan reaches, we'd look for Mega Kangaskhan with 252 EVs in speed and positive under the nature column. In Mega Kangaskhan's case, positive implies the jolly speed nature. And look, Mega Kangaskhan does indeed have a 167 speed stat, like we figured out using the damage calculator. Now, let's say I'm using a Choice Scarf Mamoswine, and I use it on my team to help KO things like Landrastarian, Salamence, Thunderous, Hydreigon, and other Ice Weak Pokémon. Let's see what speed stat Mamoswine would reach then. We can always use our Control F trick to find the Pokémon we want, or again, Command F if you're using a Mac. As you can see, Mamoswine hits a 198 speed stat if it is using a neutral nature, in this case Adamant, has 252 speed EVs, and is holding a Choice Scarf. Now, we outspeed a lot of our main threats with that amount of speed. Look, we outspeed Jolly Mega Salamence, Thunderous, Latios and Latias, Garchomp, and every threat I listed off, unless those Pokémon are holding Choice Scarfs too. Here, we have an interesting problem. Mamoswine is sitting up here at 198 speed, but the next relevant Pokémon that is a problem for our team is Mega Salamence, which is way down here at 189 speed. Wait a second though. Why not outspeed these Pokémon in the middle? Are they not important? Well, taking a glance at them, I see Mega Sceptile and Mega Beedrill, who I both never see regularly, Jolly Talonflame, who will hit me first with Brave Bird anyway, Noivern isn't very popular, I have other ways to deal with Greninja, there's absolutely no reason to run Choice Scarf Smeargle without max speed, and I don't think Mega Pidgeot is a big threat either. So, Mega Salamence is the only Pokémon that looks relevant enough that I absolutely need Mamoswine to outspeed for the particular team Mamoswine is on. Since Mega Salamence only reaches a 189 speed stat, that means we just need Mamoswine to reach a 190 speed stat to always move before it. Let's bring up Mamoswine. Level 50. And we'll give it 252 speed EVs to start with. If you'll recall, I mentioned that Choice Scarf gives a boost of plus one, which means it multiplies the speed stat of a Pokemon by 1.5 times. So if we go back to our calculator, 132 times 1.5 gives us 198, which was the number on the speed tiers. So we really didn't learn anything from that. What we need to do is find a number that when multiplied by 1.5 gives us 190. So how do we do that? We divide. 190 divided by 1.5 gets us 126.6666666 repeating. Now, I'm sure you're wondering how we're going to get a 126.6666 repeating speed stat. And of course, we can only have whole numbers in a Pokemon stat. So we'll never get that speed stat. We'll just have to reach a 127 speed stat instead. As you can see, 126 times 1.5 gives us a 189 speed stat. Because I don't want to rely on a speed tie coin flip to knock out opposing Mega Salamence, 127 times 1.5 gives Mamoswine a 190.5 speed stat. 
which will be truncated to just one night. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now, all that's left for us to do is figure out how many EVs it takes for a Mammoth Swine to reach a 127 speed step. 100 EVs is nowhere near enough. 180 is closer. 204 uh, looks like it just won away. So that means that 212 speed EVs are required to reach the 127 speed set. It might seem weird to want to have less speed than another Pokémon, but it does make sense for this to happen from time to time. Whether you're trying to control a weather condition, underspeed a Pokémon during Trick Room, or pull off a guaranteed combo by having one Pokémon move directly after the other, being slower than another Pokémon can sometimes translate to an advantage. Let's say my team struggles against Rain, but features a Tyranitar. Being able to lead Tyranitar into a Politoed Luokolo lead would let Sand immediately get set up so my Tyranitar doesn't have to risk switching into a Skull and potentially getting burned. In battles, when multiple Pokémon are sent out at once, generally at the beginning of a battle, the faster Pokémon's ability activates first. That means if Tyranitar is slower than Politoed, Sandstream would activate after Drizzle, forcing my opponent to try and reset the rain in some way. So, our goal here is to always be slower than Politoed. Let's check out the speed tiers. We can control F Politoed. There's Choice Scarf Politoed, that's definitely not what we're looking for. Not this Politoed, or this one either. You can tell these aren't minimum speed Politoed because it doesn't say Politoed has a negative nature with zero speed IVs. Now, here's a Politoed with a negative nature and zero speed IVs, but it has a negative 2 in the boost column, so this Politoed is holding an Iron Ball. I don't think that's very common, so I just want to underspeed a regular minimum speed Politoed, but it looks like that's not on this list. Remember, we found the speed stat of Mega Kangaskhan by using the damage calculator, and we can do the same thing with Politoed, only this time we need to find Politoed's minimum speed instead of its maximum speed. Politoed. Level 50. We'll give it zero speed IVs by changing this 31 in the IVs column to zero. And we'll give Politoed any speed lowering nature. I happen to know off the top of my head that Sassy raises special defense and lower speed, so I'll use that one. Okay, so now we know that minimum speed Politoed reaches a 67 speed stat. Going over here to Tyranitar. I can just give it a Brave Nature and Zero Speed IVs if I wanted to. We're good, right? 59 is less than 67. Well, again, you can do that, but let's say I was facing an opposing Trick Room team that also had a Tyranitar. Our Tyranitar knows Low Kick, so I'd love to be able to smash my opponent's Tyranitar first outside of Trick Room if I can. However, if we're both using a Brave Nature and Zero Speed IVs, we'll have a Speed Tie, and I really don't like Speed Ties. So, we can just underspeed Politoed by one point, so we can low kick opposing Trick Room Tyranitar first, but still underspeed Politoed to guarantee that we get Sand up. We can achieve the 66 speed stat in two ways. With the Brave Nature, I can just start giving Tyranitar some more IVs until I reach a 66 speed stat. So here's 15. Wow, that's pretty close. I was just guessing in the middle. Uh, that means 17 IVs with a Brave Nature reaches that 66 speed stat. Now, there's another way to do this too. An adamant nature with zero speed IVs also happens to reach a 66 speed stat. So, which one is better? There's not really one that's better here. If you're running special attacks like Ice Beam or Flamethrower on Tyrantar, then the Brave Nature would be better, because it doesn't lower special attack. If I'm running a physical Tyrantar with Rock Slide, Crunch, Low Kick, and Protect though, then I don't care about my special attack at all, so either nature works fine. Personally, I would go with the Adamant Nature here. The zero speed IVs would make grading it in-game a bit easier, since a zero speed IV is picked up by the judge at the battle resort, and a 17 speed IV wouldn't. Now that we've covered how to actually do everything, we have the tools to make a real EV spread. Let's take a look at a Rotom Wash. On this particular team, Rotom tends to be used as a way to check physical attackers like Kangaskhan and Mawile with Will-O-Wisp, and act as a good defensive pivot, being able to switch into and threaten Pokemon like Talonflame, Landorus Therian, Heatran, and Politoed. Our Rotom Wash is holding a Citrus Berry and knows the standard moves Hydro Pump, Thunderbolt, Will-O-Wisp, and Protect. 
The team this Rotom is on also features a Sylveon and Cresselia, so Bishark can be problematic if I can't give an answer to it quickly. Right now, I'm running a basic 252 HP, 252 Special Attack Rotom with a modest nature, with the extra 4 EVs and Special Defense. With this information in mind that I have learned from practicing with my team, I can create goals for Rotom Wash to help solve some of its or its teammates' weaknesses. I have three goals in mind. The first goal is to always outspeed Bishark. If I can land a Will-O-Wisp before it gets an Iron Head on Sylveon, or a knockoff on Cresselia, it'll do considerably less damage than before. It helps Rotom out too, because it'll take less damage from Bisharp's knockoff if Bisharp gets burned first. I only want to outspeed Adamant Bisharp. At the time I'm using this team, Bisharp is overwhelmingly adamant, and I figured that information out from the Global Link usage statistics. Since I don't think Jolly Bisharp is a big problem, rather than outspeed every possible Bisharp, I'll sell for outspeeding the ones that I'll face in battle 95% of the time. Secondly, I want to always one-hit KO Landorus Therian with Hydro Pump. While opposing Landorus do usually U-turn off of Rotom to avoid taking big damage or a burn, knowing that my Hydro Pump is going to actually KO Landorus is a damage calculation that I want secured in my favor. I'll settle for Okoing a simple 4 HP Landorus T, which is likely going to be the basic choice scarf set. While Assault Vest or Careful Landorus do exist, they're probably trained to survive Hydro Pump from Rotom Wash anyway, so I wouldn't be able to knock them out no matter what I do without radically changing Rotom's purpose on the team. Lastly, because I have will with to handle attacks from the physical side, I'd like Rotom to have a decent amount of special bulk to be able to stand up to lots of different attacks. As a good special defense benchmark, I think I want to always survive two choice specs, Hyper Voices from Sylveon. Don't forget, we have our Citrus Berry to help with that goal. As a refresher, our Rotom Wash has the Citrus Berry, and the moves Hydro Pump, Thunderbolt, Will O Wisp, and Protect. Now that we have our goals we want Rotom to accomplish, we can start, well, accomplishing them. For specialized EV spreads like these, I like to keep track of my numbers somewhere. Here I'm using Google Docs, but you can use Microsoft Word, Pages, a physical notebook, or whatever else you fancy if you don't want to keep track of what all your EV spreads do in your head. So our first goal is to outspeed Bisharp. We need to know what Bisharp's speed stat is, right? The speed tiers will be our friend for this goal. I'll control F Bisharp. This Bisharp has positive in nature column, so that'd be Jolly Bisharp, and we're looking for Adamant Bisharp here. Looks like Adamant Bisharp reaches a 122 speed stat, so our Rotom Wash needs to hit a 123 speed stat to outspeed it. Over here, I'll clear out these 252 special attack EVs and these 4 special defense EVs for later. I'll start to throw some numbers around in speed. 100 isn't enough. 180 is too much. 140 reaches a 124 speed stat, so that means 132 speed EVs is what we need. Let's make a note of that back on our Google Doc. 132 speed EVs outspeeds Bishark. Now, for our second goal, taking out Landorus with Hydro Pump 100% of the time. Back at the damage calculator, I'll choose Landorus T. Level 50. 4 HP. And I'll give Rotom Hydro Pump. Uh, that appears to always KO it. However, that's with the modest nature on. I'll switch modest to calm real quick. It looks like it's not guaranteed now. Let's see how many EVs it takes. Start with 100, that definitely gets it. 40's not enough. Try 52, that's not enough. 60 EVs, that looks like it does it. Back in the Google Doc, we'll make a note of this damage calculation. 60 special attack EVs. Oko's 4 HP Landris Therian form. Now, our last goal is to survive two Choice Specs Hyper Voices from Sylveon. So let's see how much damage that does right now. Sylveon. Level 50. The doubles tab is set, so Hyper Voice will be a spread move. Modest. 252. Pixelate. 
choice spec. So it looks like Hyper Voice does a lot of damage. But we do have the Citrus Berry. Looking at Hyper Voice, I can tell it's always going to do more than 50% damage. So Citrus Berry will always activate after Sylveon uses Hyper Voice. That means we can tack on the extra HP regained from Citrus Berry right now for our damage calculation. Over here in our regular calculator, I'll take 157 divided by 4 for the Citrus Berry recovery, and that's 39.25, so that means Royal Tom will recover 39 HP when it eats its Citrus Berry. 157 plus 39 equals 196. So for the purposes of this calculation, we know that our Rotom has 196 HP. Let's make a note of that back at the Google Doc. We want Sylveon to be unable to knock out Rotom Wash in two hits with Hyper Voice. If you'll notice over here, the maximum damage a Pokemon can do won't change. What I mean is that Sylveon is using the same attack twice here, so the damage calculation for Hyper Voice is the same both times Sylveon uses the move. So that means if Sylveon's Hyper Voice did 98 damage, it would knock me out in two hits. Or rather, not me, but KO Rotom. I did the math in my head for that, but as you can see here, 98 plus 98 is indeed 196. So if 98 damage KOs Rotom in two hits, then 97 damage would not KO Rotom in two hits. Now we know that if Sylveon's Hyper Voice does 97 damage, it can't KO Rotom in two hits after Rotom recovers with the Citrus Berry. So all we need to do is get the maximum damage roll in Hyper Voice to be 97 or less damage. 252 overshoots that by a lot. 100 EVs isn't enough. 180 is too much again. 140 is not enough. 148? It's exactly 97. That's precisely the number we're looking for. So, 252 HP and 148 Special Defense accomplishes this goal. 252 HP slash 148 Special Defense. survives two choice specs hyper voices so great fantastic we're done yay we accomplished all the goals we wanted well we would be done but annoyingly we're not if you'll remember each stat in a pokemon can only have 252 evs and each pokemon can only have a maximum of 508 evs total what we have to do here is check how many evs we've invented at rotom right now we have 132 speed, plus 60 special attack, plus 252 HP, plus 148 special defense, and that equals 592 EVs total. Uh-oh. We're 592 minus 508 EVs over our limit. So we're using 84 more EVs than is actually possible to give to a Pokemon. This is a big problem. Sometimes, we're just a few EVs over and we can compromise our goals by taking a bit out of special defense or a bit out of special attack, or maybe a little bit of both, and accomplish things most of the time. It might not happen 100% of the time, but at least it happens often enough that it's in my favor more often than not to be consistent in the middle of the battle. But if I take 84 EVs away from 148, I get 64 EVs left over. 64 EVs in Rotom Wash lets Hyper Voice do a lot more damage. Look, 97 is here in the middle. Sylveon would just have to hit any of these big damage rolls twice, or even one of the big damage rolls combined with one of the smaller ones. Our chances of surviving two Hyper Voices just dropped by a lot. We're going to have to change one of our goals completely. If I look back at my goals, I simply can't accomplish all three of these within the 508 EV total limit. Really though, that third one was Sylveon. Wasn't it there mainly so Rotom's special bolt could be more balanced? While it would be cool to survive two Hyper Voices, I definitely want to outspeed Bisharp because of the problems it causes on my team, and I want some offensive pressure out of my Rotom, so this Sylveon thing probably ought to be switched for another special defense benchmark. I need to come up with a new goal. I still want Rotom to have balanced special bolt, so I want Rotom to be able to survive two of something. Now, these goals won't usually just immediately jump out at you, but in this case, I have been thinking about it. 
and I think surviving two Giga Drains from Luokolo is a pretty good benchmark to reach. But what kind of Luokolo? One of those Absorb Ball Luokolo would probably be, be too much for Rotom to handle, so EVing to survive a bulkier Assault Vest Luokolo is probably going to be more realistic. But what sort of EVs do Assault Vest Luokolo use? Maybe they run Max Special Attack, or maybe they run a lot of bulk to complement the Assault Vest, or maybe it's somewhere in between. One good way to see what sort of EV spreads people are using on their teams is to check out popular team reports on Nugget Bridge. Instead of reading every single team report trying to find and compare Luokolo spreads though, you can go to nuggetbridge.com slash Pokemon, where you can see a list of every Pokemon ever used in a team report published by Nugget Bridge. In this case, we're looking for Luokolo of course, so we'll use Control F to find it quickly. Now, I already have a Ludicolo EV spread in mind, so let's look at two team reports. The first is by Talon, who won both the Texas Fall Regional and the Premier Challenge before it, and Major Bowman's team report, who went 7-2 and 6-2 at the Philadelphia and Fort Wayne Fall Regionals. Let's scroll down here to Ludicolo's EV spread. Okay, so he used 252 HP, 84 defense, 148 special attack, 4 special defense, and 20 speed. Here's Talon's description of the role Luokolo played on a team, but here's a description of his EV spread. It was Blake Hopper's team report that convinced me to use Luokolo, so I decided to use his EV spread. Interesting. Now we're at Major Bowman's report. We'll scroll down to his Luokolo. And well, what do you know, 252 HP, 84 defense, the same EV spread. This is the Ludicolo Blake Hopper took through the LCQ in the world. So, clearly, these two well-placing trainers thought that Popper's EV spread was good enough to validate reusing that EV spread on their own teams. Now, don't get me wrong, these other team reports also clearly use their individual Ludicolo spreads to great success as well. But remember, we're looking for a popular, bulky Ludicolo spread, and I find it especially notable that Popper's spread was reused twice. So, let's look at his team report. Scroll down to his Ludicolo. Okay, so his EV spread makes Jolly Garchomp's Dragon Claw a 3 hit KO, 1 hit KO's 4 HP Garchomp with Ice Beam, and the extra speed investment speed creeps on other bulky Ludicolo. Now, if Talon and Major Bowman were impressed by how well Boffer's EV spread worked on their Ludicolo, surely other players might think the same thing. Calcaning against Bopper's Ludicolo's Giga Drain should give us a good benchmark to hit when Rotom is facing against opposing Ludicolo. Okay, so I want to choose Ludicolo. Level 50. 148. Modest. Giga Drain. Now, we still have our 148 special defense EVs from before, so I'll take those away now. Hmm, it looks like this is pretty reasonable to Eevee against. Remember, we've already done the Citrus Berry map. We know that if Luokolo's Giga Drain does 97 damage or less, it won't KO Rotom in two hits. So 100 EVs is too much. 44 is not enough. 68 is not enough. 76 is not enough. And 84 deals at max 96 damage, so we're good here. It's not ever going to do 97 damage exactly, but that's okay, because our goal is to make sure Giga Drain never knocks out Rotom in two hits, and 252 HP, 84 Special Defense accomplishes that. We'll make a note of that again over here on the Google Doc. 252 HP, slash, 84 Special Defense. EVs, survives, two Giga Drains. Now, we'll need to check again to see if we're over 508 EVs or not. 252 HP, plus 84 Special Defense, plus 132 Speed, plus 60 Special Attack, equals 528. Hey, 528 isn't all that much over. 528 minus 508 is only 20 EVs. 
So what happens if we take 20 EVs out from Special Defense? Well, first, I know 64 EVs is wasting a point, but you'll learn more about that later on in the article. As you can see, this is a 148 Special Defense stat, but if I take 4 EVs out, I still have a 148 Special Defense stat, so I can put those extra 4 EVs into defense. But that's besides the point right now. If we look at the damage roll, you'll see the maximum damage roll is 98. The rest of the damage rolls are 96, 96, 92, and so on down. So if Lucolo hit the maximum damage roll 98 twice, then sure, it would KO Rotom. But if it got any other damage roll at either time using Giga Drain, then it couldn't KO. So, wouldn't it be kind of lucky to land a maximum damage roll twice in a row? Definitely. Dealing 98 damage only happens 1 16th of the time, since there are 16 damage rolls. If the attack is being used twice, then the probability of Giga Drain hitting the maximum damage roll twice would be 1 16th times 1 16th. Oops, it looks like the calculator is interpreting that calculation differently than what we want. Adding parentheses usually does the trick for these types of problems. So that gives us 1 out of 256, or 0.00390625. That's a really small number. So when we take 100 minus that, we can see that our Rotom Wash has a 99.9960937% chance of surviving two Giga Drains from Ludicolo. Now, granted, that's not 100%, and with critical hits, some people might not be comfortable with any odds below 100%. However, I'm totally fine with those odds, so I'll make a note of this over here. 252 HP and 60 Special Defense EVs survives 2 Giga Drains 255 out of 256 times. Well, are we finished now? We have the 252 HP, 60 special attack, sixty special defense, and one thirty two speed. And like I mentioned briefly earlier, since 64 EVs gives the same amount of stat points as 60, we can put the extra 4 EVs into defense, where it actually makes it different in the stat point total. Again, you can read more about that later in the article. So I'll put the 4 defense EVs in here, and this was all using the calm nature. Let's add these numbers up. 252 HP, plus 4 defense, plus 60 special attack, plus 60 special defense, plus 132 speed, equals 508 EVs total. So it looks like we're finally done. So now we can fold our EV spread, we can italicize it, we can underline it, we can do whatever we want to it. We made it. Remember before, when we were using 252 HP, 252 special attack? Now we accomplished these three goals specifically. Technically, yes, we already accomplished the second goal with the previous EV spread, but because we use so much less special attack, we're now able to outspeed Bisharp and always survive two Giga Drain from Ludicolo. And it's not like that's the only thing that changed. For example, I'm pretty sure the first spread only has a 50-50 shot of surviving Hydreigon's Life Orb Draco Meteor, but now we survive the attack 100% of the time. If you guys are still with me, I'd like to say thanks for sticking around this long. Trust me, if you get how to use a damage calculator and understand my last two main points in the article, you have all the tools you need to create your own specialized EV spreads tailored to your own individual teams. I encourage you guys not to give up and stick with it. Trust me, the more you do this, the easier it gets. I wish you all the best of luck in all your Pokemon endeavors, and I hope you enjoyed the article. Ciao!